There's a comic by John Merrow that shows a dad and his son sitting together. They both look completely frustrated. Thankfully, dad has a solution to their frustrations. He says to his nine-year-old son, son, you do my website and I'll do your homework. <laughs> Digital natives, elementary education, a nine-year-old building a website. Elementary school students were born in the 21st century. They don't know what a cassette tape is, or even a CD at this point, but they can navigate technology better than some adults I know. And by some adults, I mean most adults I know. <laughs> Now, as an elementary school teacher, how do we use this to our advantage? How do we keep up? They're the future. They're the college graduate you may hire in 10 to 20 years. The 21st century skills are so natural to them. It's important to integrate it into their education. Math, art, social studies, science, literacy, theater. Technology shouldn't be a separate subject area. It should be integrated into all aspects of their school day. In the early 80s, when the first PC computer came out, the thought behind it was business, efficiency and organization in an office, word processing. In the late 80s, the first digital cell phone came out, a cell phone just for phone calls. <laughs> a cell phone today, the possibilities are endless. Think education. It wasn't until blogging and smart boards and streaming discovery education in the late 90s that it became transparent how technology can support a classroom. But initially, I don't think technology in the elementary school classroom was on many people's radar. But let's fast forward to now. The future is now. Math manipulatives on a smart board in a kindergarten center Illustrating a scene from your favorite story in kid pics in first grade. Creating an iPhoto slideshow with captions to teach the viewer about New Amsterdam in second grade social studies. Ebooks created on an iPad in third. Google Drive access for a group writing assignment in fourth grade. Fifth grade science with QR codes to disseminate information about different types of trees and documentaries by sixth graders. I've seen it, it's a whole new world, and it's fascinating and innovative, and it's happening in an elementary school. So let's take a trip to a fifth grade class in an elementary school today. President Lincoln's iPad. I don't know if having an iPad would have guided him to abolish slavery, so I'm happy he lived in the time period he did. But here in the present, Fifth graders study American history. Elementary school students need to learn about our presidents and how they've shaped the world we live in today. Each student in the class gets one iPad and assigned one president. So take President Lincoln. One of his contacts in his iPad would have been Ulysses S. Grant. At the time, Grant was chosen as the head of the Union Army. My guess is they would have needed to communicate at some point, a little FaceTime appointment around two o'clock. <laughs> President Lincoln also promoted the modernization of the economy, so he might need access to a banking app or a finance app to track the market. Now you're wondering, how does this teach students anything? If implemented correctly, the students can use technology to access historical facts as well as showcase what they've learned. So step one, the iPad, use the iPad to do the research and take notes directly on the device. Step two, with the information gathered, share the knowledge in creative ways. Change the wallpaper picture to something that represents that particular president. Fill in a texting conversation that the president may be having and who from their contact screen they'd be having that conversation with. Make it valid and credible. 
give them apps that would have been useful in their time in office based on the events that went on during that presidency and that time period. Prove what's been learned about the assigned president through the iPad. Set it up so that if a fellow classmate picks up that iPad, they'll be able to decipher which president it's for and learn from the information. A little more social studies for you. A student from class A studies President Jefferson, puts together a Google presentation about their findings. Their classmates can take their iPads and scan the QR code. It will bring them directly to the Google presentations created by their classmates. They can now learn from all of the other students in their class about the other presidents. Class B. My opinion, the students in Class B are in 1989. They've gone back in time. 1989, that was me in third grade. Pencils and notebooks. If you've seen my handwriting, trust me, I would have preferred some access to technology. So here in Class B, take a notebook, write some bulleted notes, summarize your findings, pass it to the student next to you, so they can learn about the president you studied. So now what? The students in class A learn about 25 different presidents at length, with visuals, at their own speed. And the students in class B have learned about two, the one they studied and the one the person next to them studied. So which class of students will learn more? Think back to class A for a moment. For homework, Class A reads off their iPad what they need to do tonight. The teacher asks them to leave at least one comment on two of your classmates' presentations about something they've learned that they didn't know before, and a constructive statement about how their presentation could have been enhanced. Will there be a comparable homework assignment in Class B? They won't even have access to their classmates' findings from home. And isn't that what us teachers are here for? Give them homework? Back to the school day. Video games. Surprisingly, the average age of a video gamer is 37 years old. <laughs> yep, on average, a 37-year-old plays more video games than anyone else. However, elementary school students are not far behind. They play their fair share of video games as well. But we don't play video games in school, or do we? I heard a yes out there somewhere. This is an example of a scene in Sid Meier's Civilization game, in particular Civ 4. Can be played on an Xbox, can also be played in school on an iPad, or in a laptop computer. It supports the sixth grade social studies curriculum. You build a civilization in ancient history. You have to acquire resources, develop a government, refer to key players in history, make moves to different types of climates and environments, and understand the workings of culture in ancient history in order to be the last civilization standing a game of strategy that is most successful with prior knowledge of ancient history. Minecraft. You've all heard different views about Minecraft, and it's all about how you implement it. In this scene, you see, if you can see it, it's a little glare up here, but you see Harry Potter in a scene from the Harry Potter story. Build a scene from your favorite story in Minecraft. Don't just share with your teacher what you learned about the characteristics of the characters in the story. Don't just tell me that you know about the different aspects of the setting. Show me using Minecraft Creative. Or, are you studying different countries? I know that third graders study different countries around the world. Each student is assigned a landmark and has to build a city around that landmark. Use Minecraft Creative 
and show me that you've learned about the landmark and the scene around it. Literacy, social studies, geography, and technology in a video game. Angry Birds. What? You're playing Angry Birds in school? I'm not saying let's lounge around on the kindergarten carpet and knock birds off their wire all day. But you can implement it correctly with math and science, velocity and distance. And finally, with video games, we have Brain Challenge. There's an online version of Brain Challenge, and it's set up by grade level and topic area. You always want to use something to challenge your students, to enrich what they're learning. Use it as an extra credit incentive. You don't need that critical thinking question at the end of a 1990s textbook anymore when you can assign them a homework assignment using Brain Challenge. So yes, elementary school students are digital natives. Born in the 2000s, now what do we do? And how do we keep up? You need to integrate it. You need to use it. Technology is all around. It's an educational tool. It's a part of everything we do now, at home, at work, in school. People check their email before they even brush their teeth. It's a whole new world of learning in this day and age. Start them young and use technology to engage. Thank you.